I have the pipe from hell, a sink too high, and night has fallen upon my little box, and I settle in as my first night as a real New Yorker with a real New York apartment of my own. I lie down on the futon, turn the light off, go, okay, now, go to sleep. About five minutes in, the radiator in the corner starts making noise. The apartment is freezing. That's it. Now I'm boiling. Then I'm freezing again. That's all the heat you get. You get about 20 seconds every four minutes in this very crass, very loud hissing. So I, I just wait for more to come. A few minutes later. So I'm lying there dealing with that. And then underneath the futon, I hear another sound. It is my neighbor below me snoring. I hear this. I realize this is my new soundtrack. And so I try and time my breaths to coincide with this snorers. So the snoring will no longer be antagonistic. It will gently lull me to sleep. So I now have this really obnoxious soundtrack. And the time goes, and the time goes, and I'm lying there, and my bladder starts to fill. But the trip to the bathroom is just too far. And you go, well, I really gotta go. It feels like, you know, a gorilla is stepping on me. But I'll just go to sleep, because I really can't get all the way over there. And so, I'm lying there with a full bladder, reckoning, well, I might as well do something constructive. I'll go take a leak. And I'm moving, I am moving, my hands are outstretched. The pipe from hell is coming closer. The pipe from hell and I connect right on the left side of my chest, sticking me to the pipe. <laughs> Leaving a Canadian bacon-sized piece of meat cooking on this. I'm like, oh, God, it's so much. And I go into the bathroom, turn on the light, like holding my chest, staggering in to see hundreds of roaches who have now been caught. And you, you know what happens when you, when you turn the light on and you surprise a roach? They take like three steps and freeze and they lower to the ground and then the antennas start going. They're checking you out. Where are you? Where are you? They are survival species. I must get back to the little hole behind the refrigerator so I can fuck another roach and have 60 million babies. That's all I want to do. All I have to do is eat one little piece of a matchstick and I can give birth to a tribe of insects. Anything with carbon, I can eat and make more roaches. So I must get away from this guy so I can infest and someday my relatives will take the world back. That is all that's on their tiny little minds. Get the world back by fucking their little roach brains out. So I just go in there and kill every living bug in there. But I take my time. And I, I talk to them. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna make it. You're going to make it. No, you know, no, you're not. Die. 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 Oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, you're a lawyer, huh? Oh. And what, what do all you guys do? You work for the IRS, huh? And so I have now bug guts on my hands. Bug guts splattered all over my face. I don't even care. Ah! A wild man. So I take the leak and I go staggering back to the futon and I lie there. And finally, around five in the morning, exhaustion bludgeons me into sleep. And then the construction behind the building that I did not bother to look out of the window and see promptly starts at about 6.01. Two external generators to power three jackhammers. You can imagine what that sounds like. I was on the ceiling holding on, scared the hell out of me. Within two minutes, the entire building is awake and furious. You hear toilets flushing, angry stomping around. You know when someone flushes a toilet hard, like, fuck you. <laughs> like, bang, bang, bang. And like, boom boxes and stereos are being turned on all over the building in protest. The guys next to me have Natalie Merchant cranked on 11. My walls are breathing. <laughs> So I too get up because I cannot sleep anymore. Finally, it's light enough for me to go out. I've been listening to these guys sing outside. All these guys think they can sing. Like one guy who under the boardwalk, his 15 friends, up out of the sun. It's like some kind of like really bad Broadway thing. 
and I, you know, I just start thinking of like the BB gun, you know, not a 30 odd six, not going to kill anybody. One of those little Crossman 760s on one pump, to where you shoot it and you can actually see the BB go through the air. I mean, it's it's about twice as hard as you throwing it. That's what I wanted, you know. There she was, right in the neck. Just a ow, hey! He punches the guy next to him, but the whole time it's me. So anyway, I go into the street, out of my mind, furious. Find the first person I can see moving. Go out of my way, bump into this person. This case was a tiny little Ukrainian lady going to the church up the street. The lady who has like the beard, the mustache, you know, it's 110 years old. Yeah, they're really tiny. They, they start to shrink at like age 80. And they always are talking, they're saying something, or they're singing, and it kind of sounds like they're crying, and you really can't tell what they're saying. <laughs> the kind of lady you hold the door before, and they don't even notice. You hold the door, and, <laughs> and everything in me wants to run out there, grab the bag and the lady, and carry them. And I forgot, they're New York little old ladies. You know, go up, excuse me, ma'am, and get the fuck off me, ball bag, motherfucker. Pull out the pepper gas. So I go steaming out into the New York morning, find the first person I can, which is the bearded lady, and just go out of my way, boom, bump into me, get the fuck out of my face. Get the fuck out of my way, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And then everyone comes out of their windows because they're all mad too, and they're all like, fuck you, fuck you, MTV. And I became overnight transformed into a vocal, belligerent New Yorker. And it's so much fun. Because there, when you scream, fuck you at somebody, they go, ah, fuck you too. And it's like, no big deal. They don't get out of their car and pound you. And everybody in the city is pissed off. So everyone is a character. Cabs will drive at 70 miles an hour down the street with no one around them beeping and cursing. At who? I don't know. Car stopped at a red light. Beeping at a red light. Hurry the fuck up. It's a red light. Fuck you. Fuck me. Then what do you do? You yell at the guy ahead of you. Beep. Fuck you. He's like, ah. But no one gets out and shoots each other because everyone needs that the steam valve. So traffic is this unbelievably loud show of hostility, aggression, and male one-upmanship. Cabs will cut each other off. They don't even need the lane. They just like to do it. That's right. I'm cutting you off. And you're in the backseat like... You know, like when someone gets really close, like when you're driving with someone and they're kind of drifting and you kind of do that thing when you're in the passenger seat like, uh, what are you doing? There's one cab driver whose horn is broken. And instead of emitting that horrible sound that makes the fillings come out of your head, you know, it's so annoying. His, the, the pipe going to like the, the, the thing was like dented or bent or something and all that came out of his horn was, ha. Oh. Oh, and it had almost a pleasing, sonorous tone to it. And he was so pissed. And I had a red light, you know, I had some time, so I figured I'd have some fun watching him get mad. So I leaned down so he could see that I'm watching him. I'm, I'm like... <laughs> and he looked at me like... you typical male. I'll make it work. I'll hit it harder. So he's like... Oh, oh. I'm looking at him like <sighs> and he's like sitting there paralyzed behind the wheel because it's like it's asshole psychotic is like hassling him in a lot of towns people will just be like looking like you like what's your fucking problem in New York all these guys walking across the street fucking awesome you're awesome, MTV man. You go, boy. That was great. Fuck that guy. Voila, a New Yorker is born.